Hello there, YouTubers. What we have right here is a tube type radio. This is called the Cosmos Radioman. What this uh, started out as is a kit for kids to experiment with. Now, as we all know, nowadays kids don't experiment anymore, so this is actually not a kit. This is well, it's a tube type radio that you can, well, you can do some experiments with it, but it's basically a, a Jubilee version, 70 years, it says right there. And what started out as something that you had to build literally from scratch, even including the housing and all that. As you can see, for the 70th anniversary, they've turned it into something uh, quite fancy, quite vintage looking that came all pre-assembled. The only thing you can really do is change the coil. It's uh, You can replace it. This is the uh, shortwave coil. You can probably tell because there aren't a whole lot of windings on this. There is also, uh, which, well, I don't know where that went. I still have it, but there is also a coil for the classic medium wave AM, which is uh, a much bigger thing. This is something that I got in around 2004 and it's basically a, uh, a rather simple thing I'm just I'm just gonna show the schematics So using an ECC 82 or if you're in the American part of the world a 12 AU 7 it's a double triode really something uh, quite simple and well this has been sitting around for many many years I uh, well I never really used it I mean well, it was a present. My parents paid a lot of money for this. Was, uh, this this was not cheap, I tell you that. But I never really used it. Part of the reason was it required so many batteries. It's uh, It runs off of 12 volts. It literally has a huge battery compartment in there and you have to put an, a seemingly endless amount of AA batteries into this to get up to the 12 volts to make this run. Of course, uh, <laughs> I never had that many AA batteries lying around, so, uh, well, once the batteries that came with this thing were empty, uh, this just kind of uh, ended up uh, not being used anymore. So, anyway, enough of a, uh, of a background, background story to this. So you can see I finally dug it out, and uh, I have it all set up. The original headphones that came with this thing are long gone. Those were just some cheap things. So just have it hooked up to this uh, Logitech computer speaker so that we can hear something. Uh, we got our feedback. We got, it also combines, uh, this is a, also a power switch. Uh, there is the output transformer coil, as I already said. Tuning capacitor, this piece of cardboard I put on there. Uh, I mean, the the print came with a unit, I just uh, wrote down, these are uh, medium wave frequencies that I once figured out for this. Uh, it's connected to ground, safety ground right there, in a very safe way, as you can no doubt see. And we have a uh, an antenna, it's kind of a short one. But, uh, as you can see, it's got, uh, these are coupled together via capacitors, as you can see. And we are using the Antenna 3 input. Some nice binding posts on that. Why am I doing this? Well, not so much because I suddenly want to listen to radio with this. Uh, no, no thanks. Uh, <laughs> this, uh, this doesn't really work all that well. Kind of a neat thing, but um, nothing more than that. Now, what I want to do is I wanted to try out some ECC82 tubes that I have uh, for a possible future project. So, as you can see, uh, where is it? There it is. This is, uh, yeah, generic as hell, a Chinese 12AU7. That's the one that came with this. Now, out of the mystery device that I once found at the dump, I got this. This is an ECC82, 12AU7, made by Ultron, whatever that is. And I wanted to test the two and make sure that they are still working. So I just want to stick this uh, Chinese tube in here. 
And I'm now going to turn off the lights in the workshop and switch over to an old incandescent light so that we don't get the noise from the inverters running the fluorescence up on the ceiling. And then we can uh, have a listen. I'm obviously running this using a laboratory power supply, 12 volts. And... Okay, speaker has turned on itself. As you can see, tube is glowing quite happily. That's looking quite nice. And I guess it's picking up some interference from the camcorder as well. As we go all the way down, it's quite hard to tune this because obviously it's just uh, directly coupled to the tuning capacitor. I'm going to take this uh, feedback out a little bit. Because if you, if you turn it up too far, it's just going to distort like that. So, I'm going to be kind of careful. This is maximum volume, it won't go any higher. Just an observer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, so so hearing that, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious why um, you know your experience shows why you care so much about um, this cause and why you decided to uh, to join in. But that light has a bad switch. Hmm. I am disappointed. What is this? A couple of. Uh... Uh, this this is just you know this is kind of a rubbish construction. It's just making not making very good contact and all that. This is uh, hmm. They are seed dispersed. Um. Well, I guess we can agree on the fact that the performance is somewhat. Uh, somewhat disappointing but this tube works and uh, so does the other one the ECC 82 uh, made by Ultron out of that tube mystery device we turn it on okay should have heated up at this point and can we see it Yes, we can. Not as visible as on the other. particularly a bit of a problem for you guys here in China because in English it is obviously you know the International Fund for Animal Welfare but in Chinese it's more like you know the International Fund for Animal Protection so oh isn't a whole lot going on I don't think this covers the whole entire shortwave band so uh, well anyway uh, let me switch over to the proper light again so these two tubes are working, which is good news. Uh, another thing that I was uh, thinking about is uh, this. This is something uh, that I have. This is an ECC85. And I was like, well, ECC85, that's close enough to ECC82, so how about sticking this into there? Well, luckily I did do some research before trying that, because... Uh, <laughs> it would have been quite lethal because uh, this thing, on this, the heater voltage is um, center tapped 12 volts. So depending on how you hook it up, you can run it either off a of 12 or off a of 6 volts. This one is 6 volts only. So that's the first thing. Uh, the connections, the internal connections to the socket are different as well. So you can't just plug it into there unless you want to blow something up. But uh, theoretically, I'd also have a second one of these. Uh, these were 
uh, quite common, quite popular FM front end tubes in the 1960s. And so this, uh, this Zaba tube type radio over there has another one of those built in. Uh, now one thing about this um, radio, something that you could improve if you're interested. I read that on the internet and it's kind of logical. To make this at least somewhat child compatible, uh, as you can see, it runs off at 12 volts, obviously. The heater, so you can see you get your two um, connections. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a center tapped winding, as I already said, so you can uh, either hook them up in parallel and hook it up to 6 volts, or you can hook it up in series, like it's done right here, and run them off at 12. But they're also using the 12 volts as the anode voltage and well I read some uh, some things in the internet and people uh, rewired this and connected this to uh, 70 volts worth of anode voltage and they said well with that kind of voltage the radio runs a whole lot better than with just 12. Yeah anyway uh, that's that some uh, some tube experiments for the first time on the Dr. Cassette channel not for the first time in my life, actually. Um, I built many, many years ago a radio. It was uh, one of these, essentially it was just one of these um, super simple detector radios where you have your tuning uh, circuit with, uh, with a coil and tuning capacitor. And instead of then having the classic kind of rectifier diode, the germanium diode, or uh, if you want to get extra good performance, a shot key diode, instead of that I put in this. This is a, uh, where does it say? This is an EAA91. It's a tiny little tube. And this is a double rectifier. So I was using a tube rectifier instead of a diode in that radio. There it is. And uh, I, I tell you, I still remember I paid a bomb for this. This was, I don't know, I think it was close to 30 euro back whenever I got it. Absolutely ridiculous. So, uh, yeah, that radio is long gone. I still have the tube and I still have the socket. That's that one right here. Well, I guess more tube experiments will be coming up in the near future, so you can all look forward to that. But for right now, I'm just going to say thank you for watching and see you again soon.